but it looks like uh, right here the list in order. Let me read it in order, and then we'll figure out first, second, third, fourth, fifth. Uh, Trump is second on this, but uh, the way they read the list was Jeb Bush, 18, Ben Carson, 17, Chris Christie, 8, Ted Cruz, 35, Carly Fiorina, 1, Jim Gilmore, 0, Mike Huckabee, 4, John Kasich, 1, Rand Paul, 20, Marco Rubio, 108, Santorum, 4, Trump, 56. So Marco Rubio, first place, Trump, 56 is second. Ted Cruz with 35 is mm. third and fourth. Fourth is Rand Paul. Fourth is Rand Paul. So he is uh, potentially uh, looking at getting uh, fourth or fifth. But the shocker today, obviously, is uh, Marco Rubio, who has been a wall from Iowa basically for the last two or three weeks. There haven't hardly been any Marco Rubio events until uh, last Thursday's debate when he came in town and then he started doing some events. So the New World Order's mainstream control of the media, uh, I think, can be credited with the results in this particular caucus. So let's just hope that that's not repeated throughout the state. One of the things that concerns me about uh, Marco Rubio, of course, is his neocon credentials and the fact that uh, when, when the person made uh, the speech for Marco Rubio, uh, did he or she just continually repeat the word ISIS or did they have anything else to say? <laughs> Well, they did focus uh, on security, but frankly, we were in the back corner of the room, and it was very difficult to hear. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. There was no application system for the speakers, so there were a lot of people having trouble hearing. Even when we were very quiet, uh, we had complaints about it, even the fact that we were whispering back in the corner. So, uh, well, it's interesting uh, because I was two senators or, or Republicans, and we got uh, Joni Ernst, who just got elected in 2014. We have Chuck Grassley, who's Republican. Uh, Grassley... Uh, did not, and neither one of them officially endorsed anybody, but Grassley went to some Trump rallies and said, let's make America great again, that type of thing. And then uh, Joni Ernst went to a, uh, a uh, Marco Rubio rally and uh, essentially used all of his talking points about uh, the fact that we have to go to war with everybody, but especially ISIS. And he had given her... Uh, a, a lot of money from his super PAC when she ran this this uh, in, in 2014 when she got elected. Uh, so basically, he has made uh, some connections with some very powerful people in Iowa, like Joni Ernst. It's interesting, I think, that of this uh, authorization for the use of military force, this new one that has been labeled. Uh, Alex Jones said it and then realized that a senator who saw this had the same label for it: an international martial law document, the new authorization for the use of military force that has no restrictions on the president as to where he can go, when he can go, how long he can stay and send troops to uh, anywhere on the in, in, on Earth. And she is one of four co-sponsors for this bill that was introduced, uh, kind of surprised everybody just before the snowstorm uh, by Mitch McConnell, the head of the uh, Senate, the Republican Senate. And Lindsey Graham was one of the ones who signed on to it. Joni Ernst was one of those. So she, he, she is part of uh, this very strong neocon uh, wing of the Republican Party, and so is Marco Rubio. So the uh, the militarized uh, industrial complex really wants to see him uh, move forward, I think. Right. Because it's certainly not what the American people want. Yeah, go ahead, Richard. Okay, real quick, because we got to go. We're going to see if the Democratic caucus here is still going on. We'll All give right. you an update. That when we find out anything, we got to leave. But Grassley showed up at a bunch of candidates' events. So, uh, oh, he did. Okay. All right. So okay. he wasn't. All right. Thank you. Right. Thank, you. Right. Thank you. That's Richard Reeves there on the ground in Iowa. And what he was telling us was that Marco Rubio overwhelmingly won that caucus in, uh, where he was attending. Uh, the second place it was over 100 votes, and uh, uh, it was about 50 something that Donald Trump got coming in second right. place. Uh, third place was. Uh, Rand Paul with 20. As we look at these results here, uh, I think it is still, go over to the uh, CNN results where they've got them there by percentages. We're still holding at 29% uh, for Cruz. Uh, Trump is at 26%. So they're staying about 3% apart consistently. Rubio has moved up from 19 to 20%. Carson is at 10. Paul is at 4. Bush at 3. And everybody else is 2 or less. 2% or and less on the Republican on side. Yeah, Democratic side. Yeah, on the, on the Democrat side, the, just click that one right there. Yeah, yeah. there you go. I think uh, 
it's really close in that it's it's 51 49 mm. uh with clinton slightly barely ahead of above sanders well this yeah. might be a good time to play my report um what is the difference between a democrat versus socialist since we do have them neck and neck People just think, how how could this happen? Where did Bernie Sanders come from? What is democratic socialism? And, um, you know, when I did a little bit of investigating, you find out <laughs> there really isn't that much of a difference. No. And until socialists are able to get in a third-party vote, they just back the people who are the most like them, mm -hmm. a la Hillary Clinton. So let's mm -hmm. go ahead and play that report. This is the dynamic that I'm in. I would just like to wake people up. Stop operating in their playground stop it well let me say this i totally agree with you i've tried i couldn't pay for the bandwidth to put all of our videos out on our own platforms now we're doing that uh, at prisonplanet.tv and the nightly news and putting ourselves you know up on television to reach people because it's kind of like jacking into the matrix going into their playground i try to then claw them over here to see what we're trying to do what you're trying to do but i totally agree with you the answer is for all of us to create our own systems, our own ideas, because vibrant, independent ideas will trump this corporate plastic Borg, this 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 brainwashing they're trying to push. I mean, banning father and mother, uh, banning you know the word husband and wife. I mean, that's so cultic that if I'd have been told ten years ago they were going to ban words like that, I wouldn't have believed it. They. In an otherwise softball interview with Chris Matthews, Hillary Clinton seemed a little bit rattled when she was asked to explain the difference between a Democrat and a socialist. What's the difference between a socialist and a Democrat? Well, is that a question you want to answer, or would you rather not? Play, well, play? Uh, you know, I, you'd have to ask. Well, see, I'm asking have, you. You're well, a Democrat. He's a socialist. Do you, would you like somebody to call you a socialist? I wouldn't like somebody calling well, me a socialist. But I'm, I'm not one. Okay. I well, mean, what's I'm, the difference I'm between a socialist one. and a Democrat? Last well, question. I can tell you what I am. I am a progressive oh. Democrat. I'm a progressive How's Democrat. How's that different than a socialist? Who likes to get things done and who believes that okay. we are better off in this okay. country when we're trying to solve problems together. So this is the party's leading candidate. But Matthews was equally flustered last year when he asked the same question to the party's leading officer, Debbie Wasserman Schultz. What is the difference between a Democrat and a socialist? <laughs> I, I used to think there was a big difference. What do you think it is? The difference between... between a Democrat like Hillary Clinton the, the and a socialist like Bernie Sanders. What's the difference between a, being a Democrat and being a Republican? Well, what's the, bigger this, what's the big difference between a Democrat and a socialist? You're the chairman of the Democratic Party. Tell me the difference between you and a socialist. The, the relevant debate that we'll be having over the course of this, this, this campaign is what's the difference between a Democrat a big and a Republican? I think it's... So it's really difficult for them to explain the difference because there is no difference in the current contemporary Democratic Party. So since Bernie Sanders came on the scene introducing this term democratic socialism there into the mainstream, people are rightly confused. Here is the gist of it. This is socialism. So the three core demands of the National Day of Action are free public college, a cancellation of student debt, and a $15 an hour minimum wage um, for people who work on the campus. And how's that going to be paid? Um, great question. Uh, I mean, you know, so... Now, Margaret Thatcher famously said that the problem with socialism is that eventually you run out of other people's money. Now, socialists, they say they're characterized by common ownership and democratic control of the means of production. And of course, this means there has to be a big state there to divvy up all of these goodies to everyone equally, making sure that the very basic needs of society are being taken care of. Now, the Democrats, they also agree, you know, they want equality for all, rule by the majority, and they pretend to believe that nobody should be too rich, right, unless you're Hillary Clinton or part of the ruling class. Um, and they also believe in a big, and I do mean a very big government, taking care of everyone. They want this huge welfare state and, of course, hoping that we're all going to need big government to take care of us. But presently, this ideology is being pushed through in a very totalitarian in a way via the Democratic Party. So it looks very much like the totalitarian socialist society 
of The Hunger Games. That movie does an excellent job kind of sh foreshadowing uh, what that society would look like. But let's take a look at the website of the Democratic Socialists of America. This is what they have to say about the Democratic Party versus socialists. So the question is, aren't you a party that's in competition with the Democratic Party for votes and support? No, we are not a separate party. Like our friends and allies in the feminist, labor, civil rights, religious, and community organizing movements, many of us have been active in the Democratic Party. We work with those movements to strengthen the party's left wing. We hope that in some point in the future, in coalition with our allies, an alternative national party will be viable. For now, we'll continue to support progressives who have a real chance at winning elections, which usually means left-wing Democrats. I am a progressive Democrat. So what's the difference between a Democrat and a socialist? Well, the answer is there isn't a real difference anymore, but no one wants to admit it. Great report from Leanne McAdoo pointing out that there really isn't any difference between Socialists, communists, progressives, you know, they use these what different labels because what happens is people <laughs> began to figure out uh, what a socialist is. So then they start calling them a progressive. Now, at the Democrat caucus there in Iowa right now, we have Richard Reeves. I want to get an update from Richard as to what's going on there. Richard. Okay, David, uh, we've got you an update, a live time update here at Fair Meadows Elementary School here in West Des Moines, Iowa. And technically, Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton have tied because the way it works for the Democrats is they ultimately convert their numbers of actual bodies into a certain numbers of delegates per body count. So technically, when they count up the delegates, you have Hillary with four here and Bernie with four. It's a tie, four to four. Now, I did get the official body count, and the official body count ended up being 137 for Hillary Clinton and 110 for Bernie Sanders. And there were a handful of uh, people that came in caucus to, that decided to stay unviable that were for O'Malley. There was four or five of those guys that they decided to stay unviable. So anyway, that's the body count. 137 Hillary, 110 Bernie. Delegate counts. It's a tie, four to four. Very interesting. Thank you, uh, Richard. Thank you so much. And you've got to get going now, right? So you're going to be signing off for the night? We are actually, well, we'll be signing back on, but we're actually going to the Trump watch party here in West Des Moines. So we should oh, okay. be uh, coming back up here. We'll give you guys, as soon as we get over to the Trump watch party, we'll give you guys a heads up and come back on. Okay, great. And what you're t saying, that that's Richard Reeves at the Democrat caucus there in Iowa. He attended the Republican caucus and then went over and got an update. Thank you very much, Richard. And what he was telling us and the fact that in terms of delegate assignment, it was split 50-50 there on the Democrat side between Clinton and Sanders, but of course the Democrat Party is uh, putting up the vote totals as well, and he gave us the vote totals there. So Clinton had a slight edge at that particular caucus, and what we're seeing right now across the state is that uh, Clinton is at 50.8 and Sanders is at 48.6, but they that may round out to a 50-50 delegate split anyway. And so are we just now waiting on one more precinct there according to this map? Um, Looks like it, doesn't it? Looks yeah. like they got results one in point. for everything. Well, there's one that's uh, grayed one, out eight. there, and there's one that's white on the map that mm -hmm. they've got there on the uh, Democrat uh, Iowa caucus. So it's only 66 percent reporting at this moment. There we go. Okay, no we hear that 66 percent. Okay, that's down at the bottom. Well, it, it looks like it's uh, it's going to be very close there. And again, in these early states, I think it's all the states that vote before the middle of March. I think it's March 16th or whatever. All the states that have their primaries before the middle of March, the delegates are awarded proportionally, and I think that's true in uh, both parties, as far as I believe. I know that's the case in, in the Republican Party, and that's what's happening here in Iowa. Then after that, it's going to start going winner-take-all. Uh, there's going to be a slew of primaries that are going to happen at the beginning, very beginning of March. We have four that are going primaries and caucuses that are going to be happening in February. This is the very first one. Let's take a look at the Republican side. We've got uh, Cruz up front. He is at 28.8. We have Trump at 25.2. Rubio at 21.2. Uh, Very close. Rubio is moving up uh, close to Trump. Mm -hmm. That would be quite an upset. Well, that's what Richard was talking about. Yeah. Everywhere he goes, he keeps hearing Rubio, the Rubio push, the Rubio surge. So that Even though that he, was really, play. Yeah. he was really not looking so great after these 
few debates. Carson at 9.7, Paul at 4.5, and everybody else is way down. Yeah, Bush at 2.8, everybody else here. is under 2%. So. And, of course, with the Republican caucuses, they've got to count these votes. They're silent votes. People um, put them in by hand. So mm -hmm. There's only 53% of the precincts uh, in and the uh, Republican side. So they're a little bit behind the Democrats. Uh, so we're still waiting to see what happens. And, uh, of course, it's also going to be interesting, even though they're counting the votes in the Republican caucus, it is still going to be proportioned uh, in terms of delegates. So there's going to be a round off.